Both players already, uh, both countries already went home in the European Championships of football, Ben. But both these guys are still alive. <laughs> Even Sweden had more points than my country. That's, That's right. These sad. guys are fighting for the hopes and dreams and for the pride of their country. Since uh, they can't win at football, at least they can win at StarCraft, or can they? That's the question on the tip of Thorzane's tongue right now, as he is one game away from elimination. Yep, Liquid's Red is, of course, once more a Red Zerg spawning in the right bottom side of Antigua Shipyard, and EG's very own Thorzane is our Blue Terran spawning in the left top side of the map. Thorzane has been playing the same style for the previous two games, while Thorzane in the past has been known to switch it up, certainly in long series. He is capable of playing different play styles, and I would love to see him do something like that. I would say Antigua plays out very, very different than uh, Shakura's in TVZ, so I wouldn't be surprised if we're going to see a different style out of Thorzane. Kev, I do want to take a moment to acknowledge the Twitter universe, the guys that have been tweeting at us, uh, asking or responding to our question of, hey, what's different about our broadcast tonight? Yes. Also, some people responding to my inquiry about the Swedish fish, which is fermented herring. Uh, how do I say this? Can you, can you pronounce this word for me? Surstumming. Surstumming. I don't know. Systeming. Systeming? I have no idea. Surstumming. We'll go with that one. It sounds my Swedish is not what it used to be, Ben. Jag pratar lite svenska, but... Not uh, more it's much that. better than my <laughs> Swedish. All I know how to say is young shopping. <laughs> <laughs> young shopping, not bad. But uh, <laughs> yeah. it's better than me. Like when, uh, once upon a time, or like a long time ago, I went by car to Dreamac. Uh, that was back then for Warcraft 3. Us Warcraft 3 players, we had it tough, man. Everybody is flying first class these days. <laughs> back in my days, we had to travel 1,800 kilometers in like a Peugeot partner from All 1990. Right, really quick, just to affirm yeah. my point from earlier, how many miles is that? 1,800 kilometers is like, uh, I think, 11, 1,200 miles. I actually, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, I think something like that. <laughs> I can't do that kind of math. But yeah, how many meters is it? <laughs> 18,000. <000. laughs> Uh, and anyways, uh, I went through. Uh, I went over the bridge from Denmark to Sweden, and then they stopped me uh, as customs because they were like, hey, "What uh, or what else is Dutchy doing over here?" And I was like, "Hmm, well, uh, they're like, what are you gonna do?" I was like, "Well, I'm going to a computer game tournament." They're like, "Where?" I was like, "Ah, Jon Coping," and they're like, "What?" I was like, "Jon Coping." <laughs> I was like, "That's the only way that I read it." So I thought that's the way that you have to pronounce it, but I was wrong, man. So your Jon Chopping is not all that bad. Not bad. Uh -huh. Oh, Kev, I was actually having this conversation with Frodan today. And you've got to help me out. The game's still in its early moments. Uh, pretty standard openings once again. Uh, Thorzane's going to go with uh, Reactor Italians and expand. Redscon Hatch first. Mm -hmm. Dan asked me, where did Not Bad start? Yeah, I heard this. I heard this. And he thinks because Beastie QT copied it from me. That no, he got it. Yeah, Beastie definitely got it from us. I'm pretty sure I got it from you. But where did you get it? I got it from myself. I'm a trendsetter. I'm, I'm trying to think of the first time that we ever said, Not Bad. Yeah. Because I, I kind of feel like it came from Naniwa. Or did Nani also get it from us? Hmm, that's a good question. I do know that we were around with someone when, like, I think someone... Either Somebody of us did it said accidentally, and we thought, like, hmm, not bad. <laughs> and then we kept rolling with it. But yeah, I kind of forgot the moment when it happened as well. It definitely wasn't Beastie. I've been trying Hell so no. hard to figure it out. I think, I'm kind of thinking maybe it started at Home Story Cup. Because I feel like Sokka is a guy that would say, hmm, not bad. Nah, it wasn't. That's too long ago. It hasn't been around that long. But let's focus on the All game. All right. Well, I'm, I'm very curious. So maybe somebody out there in in the internet world was watching the first time that we said not bad on a broadcast, and they mm -hmm. can remind us. We see once more that triple orbital build from Torzain, Reactor Halion into triple orbital. So Torzain not switching it up yet. Maybe this time he is actually going for Cloak Bench. Since last game it was a fake. If he would go for real this time, uh, then maybe he is able to catch Red off guard a little bit. Uh, Red wants... Mm, no, actually, uh, not, never mind, I miss Red. He's, of course, going to try to sneak out that drone. In previous games, he had to hatch down around 7-8 minutes. Let's see uh, when he's going to get it down this time. Uh, he has those three queens. I guess two... He has four queens on the map right now. One queen is on the way. So, ex uh, identical opening for Red from the previous games. And I'm really a bit worried for Torzen, man, because he's going to have to switch it up some way. Well, you know, I have to feel like watching Thorzane's play, he's making one of the mistakes that we've been critical of Cass. Yeah. from or of in the past, uh, where he's just doing the same thing over and over and over. The only variation that we're seeing here is he's getting very fast siege tanks out, and that's because Antigua is a map that's very prone to high, aggressi high aggression like Roach Baneling stuff. Um, so, yeah, okay, that's a nice variation, Thorzane, but what is it really going to gain you? You're still going to be very defensive, and Red's still going to have all of the, uh, you know, the onus is on Red. He's the one that has the ability to dictate the pace of the game. 
Mm -hmm. Red does have that hatch down once more, pretty damn quick. Towards and researching Stim now as well, pretty quick to get away to Siege. So maybe we're gonna see a quick push out of Towards, and maybe he's not gonna try to float his uh, orbiter over uh, anytime soon. And he's just gonna try to get a really good economy and make a very strong two base push. And the moment he moves out with his two base army, maybe then is actually the moment he wants to secure three bases. Red maybe. Red is gonna uh, spot the orbital. But the other thing that Thorzine is doing is he's getting double eBay, Kev. And uh, yeah. you really don't get double eBay and push before those upgrades are done. Uh, so I think it's just going to be more Ooh. the same from Thorzine. The Red can a lot of potential creep tournaments over there. I didn't uh, want to end up losing them. Red in previous games against the Muslim and Antigua, <laughs> he, he managed to get 22 creep tumors at once. And let's see if he's able to break his own personal record and world record, probably. Yeah, that is the most creep tumors ever active in a competitive game at one time. So, uh, and that was just two days ago, guys. Remember, see, uh, see if Rhett is like Usain Bolt, setting new records every time he plays. Yeah, and looking careless while doing so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Red is like we're like one once upon a time we're like really excited and anxious to see your first person view of Red. It's like how does he do 22 creep tumors? And Red makes like 22 creep tumors when Mimo is still sipping tea and he's like <laughs> looking to the side. It's like wow, Red, you're such a boss. He's like smoking a cigarette, playing yeah. with one hand, just kind of sitting back yeah. chilling. <laughs> Reminiscing about them better days. And it's like, wow, Red, you got 22 tumors. Like, yeah. He's got his arm around his girlfriend, just kind of chilling. Yeah. He's watching a movie on his other screen. <laughs> Posting on Team Liquid while doing so. <laughs> <laughs> like, wow, Red. Stop it, man. Filming an interview for the Liquid Rising documentary. Yes. All that at once. Red is that good. He can get away with it. Infestation Pit is going down once more. Ben Starkward going down for Torsen as well. Torsen is orbital is making his way over to the other side of the map. Torsen has six Hellions, Ben. But he hasn't done much with it. Yeah, th I mean, wha it's just hard, man. This is kind of yeah, this is, is kind of one of the things that Terrans have to deal with in in the current meta game. It's just Zerg and uh, and this heavy queen style. It's very difficult to attack into. But man, you are a Zerg player on a respectable level. You play a lot against Terrans. What do you say that if you play Zerg, uh, if you play ZVT these days, this is what I really hate. I love how Torsen is, by the way, denying vision right now. He's going to stay in with the first few uh, Marines. He has C-Tex as well. Might be able to pick off two Queens straight away. At least one Queen did fall down. Uh, not a bad fight here for Thorzane. Well positioned on this ramp, and he's going to manage to choke off all of Red's Zerglings. And that looks painfully reminiscent of the engagement that lost Red the game against the Muslim. Uh, and uh, to answer your question, Kev, I think this is exactly what that uh, what Terran should be doing is is putting on pressure and not allowing Zerg to play completely uh, unimpeded. And uh, so I, I think that was a great move by Thorzane. He's going to continue to upgrade and continue to build up. And he's not going to completely commit to this, but his, wow. I guess his hope there. It's a beautiful siege here by Thorzane, knowing that in moments like this, when Zerg thinks the Terran army is in the middle of the map, they can make a run by via the sides. But Thorzane already preparing for that. That's the reason why he sieges up over here. I like that push a lot by Thorzane as well. And it was sort of still in the same moment as his orbital was making its way over to the third base. So Thorzane did move out pretty quick. 1-1 one, one was about to get ready. It was completely ready yet. We can see Red right now is going to try to secure um, at least the Sunlight Watchtower in the middle of the map. He saw those three tanks, but he didn't decide to run in there, which definitely was a wise choice with these Marines backing them up. The problem that I'm seeing, though, is that uh, while Thorzane does do a little bit out in the middle of the map, he's done nothing to pressure Rhett back at mm -hmm. home. Rhett's still on a pretty healthy 70 drone economy. He's getting his mm -hmm. Ultraless Cavern. Very interesting choice here in the late yeah. game, I suppose. Ultras are a bit more mobile than Broodlords, and that's why that's the tech choice of Rhett here. But he had a Spire first, right? He c I saw him cancelling a building. Uh, I didn't, in the middle I didn't of actually catch that, Kev. Oh, sorry. I saw him cancelling a building. I'm not sure if it was a Spire or not. Uh, Torsen, meanwhile, picking off another creep. And I thought maybe Torsen threw down a scan and Red tried to trick Torsen. But Torsen, once more, Ben, did not see anything in the main base of Red throughout the entire game. But I do think it's pretty smart to go for the Ultras right now, because I can only imagine that Torsen is expecting Ultras once, uh, uh, Broodlords once more. So if he throws down two, three additional start points and Red shows off with the Broodloids, it can be brilliant. Yeah, it uh, very well could be. Does Red have a Baneling Nest? No, he doesn't, but he is getting Adrenal Glands, Kevin. We all know what that means. <laughs> uh, we're going to have a very big 2-2 Ultra Zergling with Adrenal Glands and Infester. Oh, I love how Torsen is doing oh, this, man. Look at this Marine. Uh, it was so hard for Red to fungal over there. All of the Marines. Big run by right now by Red. Uh, Torsen having all of those supply depots lowered, and this is going to hurt quite a bit. Oh, he's so out of position, and this is just one of the most annoying things that Zergs can do against Terrans. Thorzane does have a bunker at his third base, but there's no units inside of it, and he's going to lose a lot of SCVs there. He's lost a lot of SCVs up in his natural. 
Uh, 11 workers killed in total with a few more still falling. Thorzane responding fairly well to this. He does clean uh, it all up without losing. But he's losing the middle of the map and he lost quite yeah. a few units there. We still have quite a few Marines. Thorzane's probably just going to stem into the fourth base of Red. Red's still having a few hero links. There are still two Zerg links in my third place. Mm, Thorzane is going to make a push on the fourth base of Red and Red's a little bit slow to respond to it. I think he could end up losing this hatchery, although I do think Thorzane's definitely going to lose these units. Zerglings Whoops. showing up and the Marines oh. not attacking the hatch. They, uh, they turn around and shoot at the lings. That means that the hatch will survive. For a moment, I thought it was a crucial mistake, but I think with the infestors coming in, I don't think the hatch would have fell uh, anyways. With a fungo, I think the Marines would have died in time. Uh, great job of Rhett by being active around the map with these Zerglings. He's not been as diligent with his creep spread as we've seen in the past, but uh, still controlling half the map. That's a lot of vision that he's getting and a lot of mobility. Both players on 2-2 upgrades and 3-3 is on the way. Look how identical it is, Ben. There's 10 second difference in the 3-3 upgrades from either side. That's beautiful play. Uh, but both of these guys, Thorzen still completely unaware oh. of the ultra switch. Thorzen committing to attack on Red's fourth base, and that means that he's completely exposed Oops. on the side here. Red going to come in with a big flank. Ultras and Zerglings and Infestors. Oh, my. Uh, the hatch definitely going to fall, but Thorzen's going to lose an army. And, uh, ooh, he's actually just going to pick up and head nice. over to the main base of Red. I do like this choice. That's one way to buy yourself a little bit of time. There are no units at all in the main base of Red. Thorzen fighting for his tournament life here in the NESL, and he's doing good, ooh. Ben. He's hanging in there, and he's doing some serious damage. Yep, uh, manages even to take out the Ultralist Cavern. He's also going to get a lot of drone kills. These Ultras are so clumsy. Uh, Red's choice to not build any Banelings, perhaps. No, you're hurting the feelings of the Ultra. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps uh, perhaps not having any Banelings hurting him a little bit there as he's lost some valuable tech, lost a lot of drones. Uh, 29 drones, in fact, having died throughout the course of this game. Rhett will catch these medevacs, but there's nothing inside. So it's, uh, it's a, a victory, but not a very large one. I mean, as I mentioned before, guys, in this series, these games were not live. And as you can see in the chat, this is the first time I see it as well. It seems like Red had some minor uh, PC issues in this game, which is unfortunate. But um, let's hope it didn't have a massive influence on the outcome of this game, even though it looked like Red was struggling a little bit there. Both these guys still at about 160 supply. But at this point, I do feel like Thorzane's army is just better than Rhett's. Uh, he's got great upgrades. Rhett also has great upgrades, but Zerglings and Ultras, while they can be great units um, at times, I feel like there, there becomes a point when the Terran army just becomes a lot more cost effective, and we can see Thorzane uh, turtled up strong on these three bases, and he will eventually be able to move out and try to take a fourth somewhere. Uh, you gotta love 3-3 three, three Marauders, Ben. Of course, Marauders getting that plus two for um, uh, against armored units, and that is, of course, what Ultras are. It's really nice to have those plus three Marauders. Mm -hmm. really helps out, like, in the, in the end of the day, those upgrades really pay off for Terran. And still, Red not making any additional changes to his tech. No Spire, no Baneling Nest. Uh, he does, it's just Zergling, Ultra, and Fester. And then this is just how he's going to play out the rest of this game. Thorzen in a small supply. He's going to drop a little bit at the third base over here from Red, but Red does have a couple of units in position. Uh, so he's able to deal with this pretty easily. At the same time, another drop on the bottom left picks off one of the building hatcheries of Red. Oh, and he's going to continue. Was I missed it. Man. I, I didn't see if it was canceled or not. I, it did go down for sure. Uh, Red sees these units and should be able to land. Oh, great. Yeah, splitting yeah. there by Thorzen. Red forced to burrow oh. and retreat. Wow. Red. Uh, Infestor is alone HP, but the Infestor does stay alive. And uh, Medivac also going to be picked off. Yep, yep it does go down. Uh, Thorazan trying to use this uh, these drops to buy himself the time he needs to secure a new base. Uh, but, Red man. He's doing this so well, and just leaving a couple of Zerglings everywhere. It seems like such an easy thing to do, but it's so hard to do when you're Zerg, because you always God, feel like you want to have all these units. Army. That's kind of a ridiculous army. This army so is really many siege tanks, and at this point in the game, you have to say, Ooh. "Gee, Red, why don't you switch into Broodlords?" Uh, that is so many tanks, and Red's just going to attack right into it, and this is not going to end well. Oh, it doesn't really land any fungos either. Not a single fungo. There we go. First fungo. It's a beautiful fungo as well, but is it going to be enough? Not at all. The uh, Ultra is taking heavy, heavy damage from these siege tanks, and uh, Red trades 90 supply for about 50. And Thorzane is completely okay with that. That means he can secure this fourth expansion. That means he can take the center of the map. And that means that he can continue to do what he's been doing all game long, slowly building on and on oh, a lead. Oh, this command center is kind of low on HP, but Thorzane's trying to get oh, it into lead, a planet. Oh, lead needs to lift. Oh, Thorzane, critical mistake. Uh, that was... Ooh, that could be very, very costly. He's going to immediately uh, throw down a new expand. Red kind of could have chomped it twice uh -huh. and killed it. But if he picks off two Ultras, I would even say it's almost worth it. 120 supply to 160. Uh, both these guys, pretty low eco at this point in the game. Rhett mining a little bit more than Thorzane, who has mined out his main and is more or less mined out in his natural. 
I mean, Torzain doesn't I have mean, very many SCVs. I think in this phase of the game, man, and command center for, uh, since he, uh, obviously Torzain has quite a few command centers, for two ultras with the current economy that Red has, is actually a decent trade for Torzain in the long run. And I think you might be right, and we can see that Red's having a, a difficult time macroing up again. He's at 130 supply. Thorzane, meanwhile, has closed, uh, closed in on his supply cap. He's at 180 of 193, so he'll be maxed soon. And uh, Red is, ooh, I think this game's starting to sort of spiral out of control for him. I feel the same way. He's still trying to hang in there with more and more Ultras. We see plus three upgrades for the mech units of Torzain. Doesn't have any, any armor, but obviously when the Ultras are in range, the armors don't really make a big difference. Uh, Red's going to try to make something happen with Burrowed Infestors. Oh, but a scan spots nothing, in mm. fact. I actually thought uh, the scan saw it as well. In the midst of this, uh, Red is defending a drop down at the bottom left-hand corner of the map. The, those medevacs uh, lifted up and floated away safely. There were some Ultras in the mix. Uh, there are still Hello, these two bird siege. infestors. The Red can see they're on siege. Everything is on siege. Yeah, but he just doesn't have enough to come crashing uh, into that's it. That's kind of what I worry about, but I still think he's going to try. Oh, he is going to try. Uh, an infested Terran bomb's going down everywhere, but Ultras are just not good against tanks. And uh, this is what happens. GG says Rhett. And Thorzane takes game number three, keeping his hopes alive. Makes the score in the series one to two. Yeah, great game by Torzain. I, I think he played very well. I do agree with the point that you made several times that maybe Red should have eventually switched into Broodlords, uh, but it's always so much easier said than done because as Zerg, while you're playing the game, you always feel worried. It's like, yeah. no, nah, if I switch to Broodlords right now, it's just going to take too long. If Terra makes a push, I'm just going to die. I won't have anything. So you kind of try to make something happen with your Broodlords, I mean, with your Ultras, with the Zerglings, try to go for run buys. But Torzain played, well, played very well. I think he positioned his units pretty good uh, throughout the entire game. Was kind of active with drops, never did that much damage, but at least made Red uh, be aware of it, be cautious all the time. Yeah, I, I agree. I think Thorzain played great. Uh, I think Red made a mistake, man. The real, the way that you win in the late game with Zerg is with these big tech switches. You've just got to mm -hmm. do it. Uh, we saw how many tanks that Thorzain had, and when you see that as a Zerg player, you have to say, all right, I'm going to stop making ultras. I'm going to make something else. I don't care what else it is, but ultras are just not going to get it done against that many siege tanks. And, well, we saw... We saw what happens when you when you don't make that switch. So Thorzain takes one game. Score is now 1-2. We're going to play a short commercial, and when we get back, Rhett versus Thorzain, game number four. Thorzain must win to keep his NASL hopes alive. Stick around.